I was downtown last night getting me some, um, I don't know what we was getting. Maybe a, um, a lemonade or some shit last night. And there's a bunch of booties with, um, goddamn fix a flat in it. Not just say, why is everybody putting fix a flat in their ass? The booty don't even be shaped. It'd be shaped like a goddamn cylinder cylinder block. Hickory Dickory Dock. <clears throat> the mouse jumped up the clock. That's a metaphor for it's late. And I can't really sleep. And let's be clear. I'm not a bad friend. I don't not ignore text messages or nothing like that. I'm a parent. <laughs> I'm a parent to small children, multiple small children. And small children, they want attention. And it's hard for me to give my undivided attention to an adult when I got an innocent child that's vying for that same attention. It's like ads and budgeting and ads and auctioning ads and whoever get the most money is the one who gets the, the, the ad space. And right now my kids is just killing it <laughs> with my attention right now. I just can never explain it to people. And I've been this way since like 2013 when my first son was born, Azor. Like when I when he was born, I cut everybody off. It's a lot of people who was I was like real cool with. They don't even know me no more since I had my child. Cause my child has kind of been my focus, but like long term. And like what I mean by focus is like some people plan life out. Some people plan it. And I'm like, that's a good idea to plan your life out. But then some of us don't have like guidance and people to kind of like help us do shit, right? And you learn the hard way, you learn on the fly. And generally when you don't have children, right? Like you're 18 going on to 30, you could do whatever the fuck you want to do. Like you're so empowered and free to do everything that you want. However, you have no real foundation on who you are, right? Your soul, not you specific, but the you general. And I'll probably like roll up multiple blunts during this session because I don't even know where this conversation is actually headed. I just have like a framework of how it's headed and I'm willing to go off the rails a little bit, but just think how everybody in the world is conditioned to their physical, right? And during that time, like when you're 18, even your existential and your intrinsic value is purely selfish, right? And you're really comparing yourself to people in your age range, older people, right? And then at the same time, you're like free. 
because like for 18 years give or take right like it like you know give or take exceptions to all these rules you've been suppressed you couldn't have sex like you wanted to have sex so you've been watching porn low-key in your room while your mom and dad sleep you get out into the world whether it's in college or just getting your own apartment your sexual energy is more like pandora's box the word would be chaotic but it's not chaotic it's disorderly and disorganized for the most part. But what nobody tells you is that sexual energy is toothpaste being let out the the, 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 the tube. And the thing about when you let toothpaste out the tube, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, no matter how much you want the toothpaste to go back into the tube. So the spiritual community has become an echo chamber of toxicity because you're under the belief that you can put toothpaste back into the tube, right? You make hella mistakes sexually. And for a majority of us, don't take it personally, for a majority of us, we ruin our, our spiritual lives because sexual energy is spiritual energy. But the foundation and crux of spiritual energy is found in the soul because the soul is the dominant hierarchical top level non-physical energy. So you have the soul is the top of that pyramid. Then you have the spiritual and then you have the physical. Now, the physical is a conflagration of the soul realm and the spiritual realm so these things can begin to express itself because the spiritual realm is perfect and all-knowing in every way however it has no physicality to express itself so the human is the channel or the vessel for all things spiritual and this bear witness to buildings um, plumbing systems, vehicles, spaceships, highways, you know, biological advancements, all of these things in reference to the world would have had to come from somebody to be really, really smart. So when you deal with spiritual energy, there is something that you must understand Primarily, before you get to any full supreme gnosis. Meaning that your physicality and your gender is a byproduct of your spirituality. It's like your physicality would be like the color of your car. Now, you may have a preference on what kind of color car you want, but the logistics of the vehicle would stay the same, meaning that a blue car doesn't drive faster than a red car, nor does a man with a penis indicate that you would have more money than a woman with a vagina, right? Those two things aren't synonymous the same way as you would say a purple car is faster than a red car. So your physical gender is not an indication of your sexual energy and your spiritual energy at all. It's just the color of your vehicle. The reality is that you are both genders energetically in spiritual terms, because the spiritual life is reincarnation. The soul life is one incarnation that has many incarnations in it. So your energy, your essence, you specifically, you directly, not now we're going to the direct you. You are a man and a woman, period. Your ideology to skew one way or another way is your being 
pushed outside of wholeness in your spiritual understanding of yourself. You're not spiritually a man. You're not spiritually a woman. You are physically a man. You are physically a woman. Spiritually, psychologically, in the soul realm, you are a man and a woman. A man and a woman. A man and a woman. If you internalize you being both the genders, then you can go to sleep a little bit easier. When you now, if you're a vehicle and you are trying to leverage on what color paint job you're going to be in reference to how successful you can be in this race, that's not an indication. The indication of how fast you can go would be an internal process right the engine and the motor and the pistons and when you get to these actual modalities they're all the same as far as when you reference endocrine gland systems central nervous systems um digestive systems respiratory systems for greater or lesser they are exactly the same in all human beings man or woman now physically there are things that men excel in generally and women excel in generally but just as a woman is good at makeup there is a nigga who is colder at makeup just as a man is good at basketball it is a woman that will beat his fucking ass in 21 So, when we get to the reality of our spiritual journey, and we're still figuring out what color we should paint our vehicle, and we're deciding this, and we're racking our brain over it, and we're not dealing with the mechanics of it, we're not dealing with the pistons, We're not dealing with the carburetor. We're not dealing with the tires. We're not dealing with the axles. We're not dealing with the fuel injection system. We're dealing with the paint job in spiritual circles. Because if your reflection within your relationship is that I'm a woman and I need a man or I'm a man and I need a woman, you're not balanced and whole to get nothing. Just by ideology, your ideology throws you out of it. And of course, you can be in a relationship initially off of sexual attraction. But what you will find out when you're knee deep into the relationship is that there is a psychological component that if you do not understand it, it will beat your ass. The same way as if you never got your oil change, your engine will stall. And what would seem like that, like your in once your engine stalls out, or fellas, once your sexual energy is drained, ladies, once your inner um, womb energy is basically non active in a sense where I'm not going to get into the things that the hospitals do to older women surgeries that they do men um they get erectile dysfunction and things like that 50 60 years old right to which just because you 50 and 60 don't mean that your eyes fall out of socket and that means that your hips don't wiggle and swivel meaning that it's gonna be very sad when you want some vagine and you can't get it up And why, and and all of this is avoidable because sexual energy is toothpaste. And the best thing about, like, if you want to keep your toothpaste in the tube, just don't waste it. Understand its importance 
and get into your inner faculties and understand your body. Because when you understand your body, you get into the truth of your... Let me digress a little bit. Because this, this is a conversation that's confusing. And if it confuses you, I apologize. But I'm being as slow and as clear as I possibly can in reference to this topic already being confusing, like to put it out there, because you can never conceptualize you being a man and a woman realistically, right? You can only understand yourself by what people tell you that you are, but you got to understand that because people told you something about yourself, they were only reflecting from their filter to which the only person that can tell you about you matter of factly, definitively in a manifestation way is when you tell yourself, even if you agree with what that, what I say, you need to then believe in what I say so much that you begin to walk in the space, right? So therefore at a certain time, you'll forget what I say and go into your regular normal patterns. Thus, your patterns and your habits is how you really talk to yourself. This is what you tell yourself every day by what you do, right? Not what you think, not what you feel, not how you process stuff, not what your echo chamber um, reinforces. What is an echo chamber? An echo chamber is a YouTube video where a person says something and everybody agrees with. They don't say, and no, listen, the reality of my platform and my content it is to challenge the way that you think. It is not for you to agree with me. I always call people on my platform to argue with me. Y'all know that. I want somebody to argue with me because I'm not here to be right. In general, that's just the normal disposition of human beings because we're all little people in reference to how massive the planet is. So when you reference study and understanding, that's one thing. But when you create an echo chamber, then you're only going to be reinforced with the mental and emotional things that you align with. But how is that? Why is that not a problem? Why, why is that a problem? Because to grow, you have to challenge yourself. So in this conversation, I'm proposing a challenging idea that you are specifically a spiritual being having a human experience. And what does that look like? You're specifically a male and a female. You are yin and yang. Your ability to vibrate specifically to one energy is your ability to get thrown off your rocket. And even when you think it, like you think in a certain way, of being a woman, right? Just say, for instance, you're a woman. So you expect all of the things that come with being a woman, right? When you don't get the shit that women get, and it's just a random ass list of bullshit that's in your brain that you expect. There is no set rules of how a woman is to be treated, nor is there a set rule of how men are to be treated. You are personal, spiritual being having a human experience, meaning that you have a responsibility to balance both energies. This is what spiritual people never really talk about. No, you specifically have to balance your masculine and your feminine, because if you just simply balance your masculine, what about your feminine energy? If you don't reference your feminine energy that exists within your life, reincarnations, where you was a full blown woman, dude, my dude, you was a woman and you was getting trains ran on you. You was a woman and you was given blowjobs. Okay. So when you are now a man and you have these memories, 
can you create the conversation in reference to what you feel emotionally or mentally or are you going to just try to be the best man that you possibly can be but that's not honest that's not authentic and it's going to create shadow what is shadow things that you don't want to see or things that you see that you don't want to deal with. So you just simply ignore because the images within your mind, the thoughts and the emotions are related to what you want to be perceived as. So anything outside of what you want to be perceived as are never dealt with until they show up one day exploded and expanded into a space where it's out of control because you don't fully understand the mechanics or the psychology or the study of the soul because the soul is not as abstract as people want to make you think it is to be because people generally especially our people say since i don't know it it's unknowable i'm gonna repeat that our people black men and women melanated men and women have a, a switch in their mind that simply says because i don't know it don't nobody know it okay so if you don't so if your leaders say these things are unknowable, right? Your soul is unknowable. Spirit is unknowable, right? What they're saying is that they don't know it because everything that's being told to you, souls, spiritual beings having human experiences are coming from filters from people who have not done the introspection and inner work themselves. So of course, spirituality is fake, right? Then that makes sense. Of course, spirituality is fake to somebody who has not done the investigation, has not done the work. Right. And they are true. They are telling you the truth. So when you absorb this energy, when you absorb these half truths or these absolute lies, then you suffer the consequences because the natural way of life for you is to create because you are spiritual essence non-physical energy that exists within the container or vessel or vehicle known as the body and ever since you enter into the scene you've been creating you created your heart, you created your lungs, you created your brain, you created your tits, you created your ass, you created your stomach, you created your arms, you created your shoulders, you created your feet, you created your legs, okay? You created your gender. You said, ah, today I wanna, this, this lifetime I wanna have a dick. This time I wanna have a pussy. This time I wanna have both. You're a creator, you're an artist, you're a Picasso, you're a fucking, Leonardo da Vinci my nigga you created yourself you created yourself you created your body and you created the vessel or the temple for you to live in when people tell you shit they don't tell you this because if they were to tell you this you would know who you are and if you were to know who you are you would no longer have to listen to their bullshit I'm gonna repeat that Cause niggas ain't never gave it up like this and you'll hear about somebody else talking the same way that i'm talking on their fucking live or some shit talking about spirit gave them this and shit spirit talk to me no you just watched a hood mystic video and you took notes and you regurgitated that shit to your larger following that's what you did the spirit ain't talk to you no spirit talk to me because I ain't get this shit from nobody or nowhere. I just can't even sleep. I just want to go to sleep at the end of the day. So now I got to say this shit to y'all so I can just take my black ass to sleep. So, we're going to go in order. We're 
we're going to talk about the anima and then we're going to talk about the animus. This is the study of the soul. This is psychology. This is the science of you being a spiritual being, having a human experience. You are spiritual energy. You are stardust. You are a glob of nothingness that exists within your body. You cannot be detected. You are the perceiver. You are the creator. You are the God in the flesh. Nobody tells you this. They tell you that you are the paint job. You're not even a vehicle. They just tell you that you're the paint job. So people literally get in paint jobs. And it ain't even me. It's just something that I just observe. Like, damn. Got a cold damn brick in her ass. And it's just like, when is when was that just the shit? Like, to just everybody is just, like, just doing that. And I'm just like, where's this lead? Where's this going? Because obviously people got underground knowledge and details to the lady that's putting fix a flat in the ass and motherfuckers is pulling up. Like, motherfuckers is pulling up to look good in some clothes. Because I'm sure when you take the clothes off, that shit look like goddamn a Legos figure. You goddamn looking like damn everything is awesome. <laughs> it's crazy out here in these streets, but I digress. I digress. It's crazy. And I'm not making this shit up either. This is real life talking. I wouldn't even want to hit that shit from the back because I wouldn't even want to. I wouldn't want the, the goddamn cinder blocks to rip out. Like, it, like so I can't even enjoy the sex. I don't want, you know, I don't want nothing to fall out. I don't want nothing to fall out. And I don't want, like, it to kind of roll up your back, have cement blocks in your shoulder and shit. Because, you know, I get a little wild and. I'm straying off topic, and let me get back on topic. It was just an observation yesterday, and I was thinking it. Now I'm saying it, and I can't squeeze that toothpaste back in that tube. That shit, that shit is just, it is what it is. What's done is done. Okay, so the anima is the inner feminine side of a man. Every single man on the planet every single man that you talk to goddamn and they didn't even have a goddamn super mario fire fire flower when you hit it you go <laughs> you hit it uh, 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 he's called he says super mario box i ain't gonna never forget that, that that's a classic right there <laughs> Tata says, no, don't get the cement. But I digress. Because for real, for real. In case you were wondering. Flat booty cakes. Be kind of all right once you get into the groove of it. Like, get you a good girl, man. Get her some pan. She got a little pancake. Them girls, man, it'd be good to you. You know, you don't gotta have the biggest booty. Meaning that, if you good to me, I'm not gonna really trip on your booty size. Honestly, just be good to me, baby. I promise you, just be good to me. I'm not going to trip on that little booty. I'm not going to trip on it. I, somebody bring the goddamn hot fudge in here because little booties need love too. We about to toss some salad, right? Little booties can get tossed too. It's not like you don't have to have the big bodacious. Because I know like I be feeling like ladies be really feeling like dudes really require a big old ass. And I'm just like, no, we don't. We don't. We don't require a fat ass. I promise you, we don't. I swear to God, every single guy will take a flat booty to to the town. Like it's never a point where you just. I never heard a dude say, you know, 
she cool as fuck but her ass just ain't my the size that i needed to be you know when you cool as fuck especially in 2020 like you gotta understand dating and life is just completely different post corona you know this is why you can get into more spiritual things meaning you can establish deeper intimate relationships do not go into your relationships thinking that you are like a nigga is caring about how fat your ass is like and i know that body like dudes be built like trash like literal trash cans Niggas that take whatever they can get. Niggas don't even know what a muscle is. You feel like... Like... Dudes be so skinny. Like, you know what I mean? Like... Like... They be so skinny nowadays. Like... Trust me. Niggas is not as choosy and picky as we made to seem or to be. We really would. Like... If you know anything about men, like, they really would have sex with anything. So, when you are dealing with the men, don't build base it on sex. This is so important. Because I would hate for you to be going out as anything when you probably like a goddess, but, like, when you're probably a goddess, you probably a spiritual being having a human experience, but you want to relate to men and you think that relating to men is sexually. You can't relate to a man sexually because a dude will hump a couch. A dude will hump an air mattress if it's wet enough. <sighs> A mattress, an air mattress. How you go like niggas will hump an air mattress? Do y'all remember before Corona, like 2019, 2018? Niggas was really out here wifing blow up dogs. Like niggas was really doing that. Cause sexually, <laughs> a like. You got to really evolve as a man. And once you evolve as a man, women still treat you like sexual objects. And that's where the disconnect is. Y'all got to understand that men do evolve. And when they evolve, they really is looking for more out of the relationship than sex. But if you think in your relationship that because you're giving that man sex, that you're like hierarchical figure within the relationship or it's like that's a thing <laughs> within it sex listen sex should legit be the cherry on top y'all should have a sunday full of goodness to make your relationship be successful that oh yeah we do fuck from time to time too she balances out my checkbook um helps me establish my credit builds my life contains my legacy and she gives me bomb ass pussy so wow that that i didn't even expect that Ooh. let's get into this anima because all of this because i get into i will get into tangents with this shit because every man has an anima he has an inner feminine side that needs to be nurtured and cared for and notice like like if you're not loving the fuck out of your nigga then leave his ass alone because you think that he don't want to be treated well he is like a lot of it is unconscious a lot of it is shadow A lot of it is based upon his life experiences and believing that he was a man and not a spiritual being having a human experience, meaning that he is a non-physical, unconscious creator, meaning that he created his heart, 
his lungs, his brain, his circulatory system, his reproductive system at the low end. The nigga can't even read two sentences together, but yet and still he is a God in the flesh because he created a whole body from non-physical energy. Makes him superior and supreme and deserving of love. This is why in China, a nigga can find love in the rice field, in the rice paddy, because I'm sure they're not looking at each other physically. This is why in India, you can live in Slumdog Millionaire land, and no matter what, they'll still be in relationships because they're not looking at the life physically, they're looking at it spiritually. And they're dealing with compatibility over ideology. They're dealing with spirituality and the cosmos and and alignment and um, pheromones and things of that nature as opposed to some shit that just sound good, but don't really make it don't really jive. Because at a certain when we get to this animus, you'll understand why a woman would specifically say I'm single and I ain't got to do when it's like a million niggas out here like it's a lot of niggas everywhere meaning that you could start a relationship at any point of your life because it's a nigga somewhere it's a nigga walking outside working for the city I seen niggas all day doing all types of shit. It's niggas walking a dog. It's niggas doing pull-ups at the park. It's niggas at the gym. I was at the gym. I seen niggas everywhere. It's hella dudes out here. And for you to say that they all cheaters or they all scumbags or they all this, that, and the third, that is a hell of a projection, sis. That is a deep and dark projection when the probability of you finding a man is likely and you already knowing that the shit ain't going to work out. That's crazy to me that you would then sit within an ivory tower of singleness and completely be vested in the fact that you just not fucking with these dudes out here, even though you may want one. And that's the kicker. So. But we ain't dealing with these. We dealing with the guys. The guys. The men. Eros and the man. Identification with the actual mother of the man. These are all qualities that all men share, that all men deal. But can can you fucking say it? Oh, no. A nigga is not going to say that. He's not going to say that. He can't deal with that. However, his emotional ass can't deal with his emotions, can't deal with nothing because he's osmosisly, unconsciously living his mother wound. What is a mother wound? Let's talk about a mother wound. No matter who your mama is on the face of the planet, that that lady ain't perfect. I'm going to say it again. No matter who your mama is, that lady ain't perfect. That lady ain't perfect. But the idea of a mother is perfect. The idea of a mother is perfect. The idea of a nurturing caring archetypal mother is perfect but nobody is entirely an archetype we just have shades and energies and frequencies and the energy may come and go but you was never entirely a mother more than you as a specific creator these are things that you chose because the same woman got pregnant with a baby and gave that baby up for adoption and went back to stripping at the club she never chose to be a mom she didn't want that responsibility so when you choose to be a mom that's a skill set that requires a specific mechanical process 
to it, but it has no real bearing on your spiritual components. It's a choice that you made the same way as you were in feelers. You went to the store, look at some Nikes, look at some Reeboks, look at some feelers, bought some feelers. That don't mean shit. Same way as you go to a club, see a nigga, have sex with him, get pregnant, have a baby. Don't mean shit. Don't mean shit. How could it mean shit? Is you making a choice and you fucking somebody. And all it does mean is that you created another creator. But you're not having the conversation. So much to do about nothing. Niggas is watching TV, talking about some shit that happened on Love and Hip Hop, Real Housewives of Atlanta still. It's 2020 fucking... Is it 20? What year is it? Gotta be 20 something. And Dogecoin, Bitcoin. They said cryptocurrency market did 20,000% in growth over the past couple years. 20,000% in growth. I digress. The internal image of a man's energy is loyal, nurturing, creative, sacrificial, because he has to balance that out. This is why men are providers for women, because we are women and we understand your sense of helplessness or lack of physical strength in a world that requires physical strength in the grand scheme of things a man works to make money to support his wife to support his family because he is a woman internally this like what how else mother sense would it make think about it Like, really think about it. When you see a man and he's captivated by you or he's seduced by you or enchanted by you. He's looking at himself. Think about that. Because where we get so confused about these particular this particular shit where where we, we we don't really understand reflection we don't really understand projection we don't really understand that we are in a space within ourselves and everything that we say to ourselves is a reflective of our outcome so when you tell yourself i'm a loser then you're giving yourself the high sign or the okay to do loser shit when you say yourself i'm a spiritual being having a human experience you give yourself the high sign to do spiritual being shit human experience shit meaning that you balance all of these energies so you become a a reason that a man is loyal is because he sees his reflection in that woman and is bound to himself vice versa our initial stages of development where we want to be the object of desire of our mothers or motherly figure. A lot of men find nurturing and comfort in the love from their mother or the perceived love from their mother. And this is what makes our mother perfect. But when we get into relationships, Because the first thing that you have to realize is that your mother wasn't perfect, but not only was she wasn't perfect, but you don't hold it against her that she wasn't perfect because you know internally and intuitively and realistically that your ass not perfect either. 
So why would you hold your mother up to the same standards that you couldn't live up to? So you just wash it off the table and you begin to relate to people consciously as opposed to unconsciously. Because if you're dealing in a relationship with a person and you're like, you have to meet my mom or you have to meet my dad to see what they think about you. Listen, your mom and dad really ain't shit for real to be even be making them type of decisions. They don't have the authority and the spiritual understanding of the inner workings of the universe to come in between the love that I have for you. I wouldn't care if like if if my wife didn't want to deal with me, she wouldn't deal with me. But if her parents didn't want me to deal with her, it depends how much she's influenced by that. But if she wasn't influenced by that, we still gonna be together. And she say, oh, my parents don't want me to be with you no more, but that's just how they feel okay that's just how they feel they are allowed to feel that way right meaning that y'all put too much stock into your parents opinion mainly your mother and it translate into your relationship and now you're dating your mom, but you're not dating your mom. You're unconsciously dating your mom. If you're dating a woman and you're like, she has to be like this. She has to be like that. She has to do this, that, and the third. You're getting that shit from your mom. And that's nasty. That's nasty to me. Because you're literally about to go out here and cold walk to a whole stranger right she is a stranger that lady that you about to meet she don't she ain't supposed to do nothing <laughs> that young lady ain't supposed to do nothing but be herself when you when you project a standard on a woman that's coming from your mom your mom is one person in a world of billions you're not psychologically sound you're psychologically dumbfounded because you're you can't get to the soul if you listen into your mom because your mom's not perfect this is what a mother wound is this is what makes it hard to be in relationships when people go on and on and on about their mother oh my mother this oh my mother that listen i love my mom everything that I am I tell people this all the time I treat my children like my mom treated me I, I am the way that I am because my mom my mom cre- like formed me to a certain extent but which was cool because I'm a man so what it actually did was balance me out it didn't fuck me up or turn me into nothing it, it gave me a sense of understanding i'm i'm gentle receptive nurturing and caring and i'm also a man too right so another part of the anima is being received or being respected by women Which is a big deal, whether you know it or not. You, A lot of times, we live under rocks and shit. We be really living under rocks when it comes to, like, moving and shaking. And then when we try to get up under our rocks and try to shake and move, we 10 years late in a game that's 15 years ahead. So in order to walk in and step in, you got to put your best face forward. Because being accepted by feminine energy is your acceptance into mainstream life. Kevin Samuels did videos for years talking to niggas, giving them valuable information, and nobody fucking cared. He start talking to women. His energy gets skyrocketed through the roof. Love him or hate him. Because women are the gateway. Women give you 
when black women start messing with my channel, my channel was successful. Because whether they balance or unbalance, you can't squeeze toothpaste back into the goddamn tube. When it's out, it's out. You got to live with that. The creator doesn't create the world more than he creates the body to then create the world. So when you understand that you are that creator, you meditate and you tune in to your creator energy, your non-physical energy, and then that gives you the instructions on what exactly it is that you can naturally and easily and magically, cosmically, matter of factly, without shadow of a doubt, no matter what, nothing can stop you manifest it in real life. However, when you be, when you absorb these ideologies and these gender roles, it completely moves you out of your spirituality. It's very subtle. It's air and water. It's mental and emotional. When you are single and you're a man and you're 18 to 30, you have the world by the ball sack. You could do any and everything you want, but you generally, most of the time, spend that time sulking and wasting your time if you're chasing pussy. You're going from girl to girl, girls that when you get to my age, you don't even remember. When I think about how stressed I was over people that I don't even remember, it's almost inconsequential to the inner. It was squeezing toothpaste out the tube. To which now I got to literally live in those circumstances and situations that I've created from that actual aspect. And I got, you know, I'm I'm. I'm Western Virgo. So the thing about me is that I will save a goddamn toothpaste. I will save that motherfucking toothpaste. I roll it from the from the tip to the like I'm a stickler in that. Like if you squeeze toothpaste from the middle of the toothpaste, consider our friendship over. Consider it over. Like I squeeze from the tip. I read the instructions to the toothpaste and the, and the shit is clear to say squeeze from the tip to the top and that like i don't understand why motherfuckers squeeze toothpaste from the middle of the fucking tube like dog can you read like anyways <laughs> what makes a man spiritual ultimately if he decides is because he can be spiritual and non-physical, which is the nature of feminine and be masculine, which is his normal, regular energy. And so these are the stages of development of the anima. These are the stages of the development of your psycho psychologically soundness for a man. Let's deal with the young ladies. Peace. The animus is the inner masculine side of a woman. It corresponds to the logos or logic or the reason of things. Which don't sound bad when you reference it initially. It only sound crazy when the logic and the reason is your dominant go-to. And the more natural, receptive... I guess the best analogy that I can think of with like natural 
feminine energy would be like a southern girl or like a southern date or like a southern tomboy that just like walking outside with like her shoes off her jeans rolled up in a t-shirt just kind of walking you know outside that's what you would kind of view like pure feminine energy or a southern belle these things are like the quintessential aspect of feminine energy in our modern society you'd be hard pressed to a find somebody walking around barefoot free bohemian like or southern bell of the ball right that energy is kind of like kind of been ushered away for some reason right what you mainly get is a very logical and rational woman that you might not feel nothing is wrong with it unless your logic and rational lead you into a situation where you're not completely in a situation that you would ideally want to be in and because you're not in there since you work so hard on your masculine traits which would simply be logic and reasoning if we're using intrinsic non-physical values right so you using these things you're thinking and your reasoning more than your feeling. Because if you were feeling, you would feel being in a relationship or being in a union or whatever the case may be. And then the same rules apply for men. If you rely on another person to tell you about you, you're only going to get their filtered version. And the thing about women generally, not everybody, of course, there are women that think for themselves that are bohemians that walk in the sand barefoot every day and then there are still southern bells and things of that nature however for the most part women get information from other women and they do and move as a collective even if y'all don't want to when y'all go to the store and looking for leggings and all of the leggings is an army fatigue you buy army fatigue leggings thinking that you cute. Turn to find out. You walk outside. Everybody got army fatigue leggings. The illusion of choice. And then the echo chamber effect, which is more prevalent and more of a fixture for women because you guys got the network and the resources and the support to say all of these things to one another because psychologically, if you know these things psychologically, you would never even take part in it. You would never listen to another woman tell you how to be a woman. You would be the woman that you are reflecting on yourself to be. And you would just be that. You would never, the worst thing about like being in a relationship with women is being in a relationship with a woman from my experience is how Y'all get so worried about what other women think and feel about you without ever factoring it in that this this is their reflection. People call things gay because, I mean, when you deal with reincarnations, we all gay as flowers if you really think about it. 
but you could lean on one side to another and project and tell people like you could do real nasty things with psychology that's why most of the things is like psychological studies that's why like social media got real nasty when they started letting the psychological people get into it because what tends to happen is that you do things unconsciously you do things without thinking and whenever you're triggered or whenever you're alarmed you're going to say some harmful things about that person and ultimately a person's not calling you gay more than that they're calling themselves gay this is this is this is like shadow projection 101 Never will a person call another person gay that's not gay. Like, not like, like, if he's gay, he's gay. But if I'm, like, calling you gay, like, I think you're gay. And, like, just being real mean about it, I'm projecting that, my gayness, onto your actions. And I'm mad at you because you're gay, for real. You're really gay. And I can't be gay like you because I got a wife, right? So I'm just like, oh my God, I hate gay people. And that's me projecting that, right? That's one-on-one. That's one-on-one basic projection. And from that point, you just never give it up. Don't never think that a person is never telling on themselves. Don't ever think that a person is not telling on themselves because that's all people do. All people do is tell on themselves because they can't you can't hate something for which you don't have a reference of. And generally, a lot of y'all don't know what y'all did in your past life. So when you hate something, give yourself the benefit of the doubt to say, maybe I did that shit in the past life. That's why I'm so mad about it. And once you let it go, you realize that you cannot project. You can't be mad at nobody for nothing because you probably did it before not not probably you definitely did that shit before in another life because you was in the echo chamber and the echo chamber was repetitive and it had you doing dumb shit the reason that i'm here the reason that i'm having this conversation such an elongated abstract conversation in reference to this conversation in reference to this knowledge is that It's very important for you to get out your habits and your loops by understanding who you are, not who you are not, based upon understanding people's projections on what a quote unquote woman should be. We should have a conversation as men and women as being whole beings, being whole, being men and women and realizing how we can leverage each other based upon our paint jobs. and get everybody through the door so everybody can eat. So, if we're going to get into some real spiritual shit, We're going to have to really start to look at this moving forward. And I know that people aren't. (laughs) My wife always tells me, like, (laughs) you be speaking 10 years ahead of yourself. So it's the year 2031. And I'm speaking to the 18 year olds that are walking out, graduating high school online, of course. And, um, They need some support. Please don't waste your sexual energy, wasting your sexual energy, squeezing toothpaste out the tube. (laughs) It's hard. It's a hard way that you'll learn. But. We don't got time as black people to continue to learn the hard way. We have to realize that it's going to be enough pussy. It's going to be enough dick. It's going to be enough sex to last us multiple lifetimes. 
or we have to get in tune to this spiritual work. We have to begin to change based upon self-acknowledgement. Why is that so important? Because when you told yourself you were a piece of shit, you were a failure, you were a loser, you did that. When you told yourself, I'm a man, you did that. When you told yourself, I'm a woman, you did that. Now, my challenge to you all is to tell yourself that you are whole. To tell yourself that you are unharmed, unstricken, unstoppable. Right? You begin to tell yourself that and understand within your wholeness is masculine and feminine energy and creative energy, your soul energy, your multiple lifetimes. And and you also want to understand that within your psychic energy is the answer to all questions that you may have. Some of the questions you don't need to ask, and that's why you don't have the answer to them, because they're irrelevant. But when it comes down to questions that you really, really need answered, you will find the answer to it. You always do, because you know everything. You are way more powerful than you realize and that a person could ever tell you. I was simply here to provide a space of reflection and introspection for you to reinforce and inundate yourself with the conversation of your godhood, the conversation of your wholeness. Because within that, that is your beginning and your ending. That is the end to your pain and turmoil and trial. That is the connection where there was a disconnection. Meditate on this yin yang energy. Find the light in the darkness. Find the dark in the lightness. And don't get too far ahead of yourself based upon what somebody is telling you and what you believe. It's very important moving into these days and times that you reflect and meditate in the space of whatever you're going through because whatever you're going through, you created it. So now it is time for you to recreate a new life for yourself. But you have to understand that you are the actual creator and I can't mess that in you. I can't speak that into you. It's very, 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 very important that you say it to yourself. You and, and not say it to yourself. Understand it. Realize it. From the fact that you create in your body. From the fact that you create in everything about you. Once you fully understand that you are undoubtedly, matter of factly, persistently, always creating you're always creating you're never not creating you begin to hold the pen in your hand behold the easel in your hand and instead of creating art that you don't like right art that you're not happy about today is the day that you begin to create a life that you are proud of and the first thing is who are you Are you just this man walking up and down the street? Are you just this woman posting pictures on Instagram? Or are you a spiritual being having a human experience?